שלנו היא דוקטור זדרבקה קרסטיבה, אם אני מבטא את זה נכון, is a lawyer associate professor at the faculty of law of Sofia University, St. Clement Ochritsky. She is the author of the monograph Legal Aspects of the State Anti-Jewish Policy in the Kingdom of Bulgaria 1940 through 1944, and she will talk about Legal Aspects of the Anti-Jewish Policy in the Kingdom of Bulgaria, 1941 through 1944. Please, the floor is yours. <coughs> name correctly yeah, thank, thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a very difficult name for foreigners it's usually not pronounced correctly uh, as you see the title of this presentation is not exactly the same what is written in the, the uh, problems that you have because the the topic of uh, Bulgarian policy during the Kingdom of Bulgaria, anti-Jewish policy is a broad topic and I decided to focus the, uh, what I'm going to say to you and present to you to the legal aspects of the deportation of the Jews from uh, Macedonia, Trace and Pirot in the light of the international uh, law of war or international humanitarian law. It's uh, important to admit at the beginning that I'm going to speak about well-known facts and well-known and well-established legal interpretation of these facts. It could be strange for external observer that discussion in Bulgaria, public discussion and also the academic discussion is still, the, still does not agree on the legal qualification of the presence of Bulgarian forces in Trace and Macedonia in, on the state territory of Greece and Yugoslavia. And this is part of the distortion of the truth uh, that we are seeing today. That is the reason why, why I, in 2011, start my uh, research on the topic from the legal point of view. And that's why I think that, uh, sorry. How do you change? Yes. How, uh, that's why I think that the legal analysis is uh, very much needed in Bulgaria, in the Bulgarian uh, uh, legal academia, because on the first point, the state's policy toward the uh, Jews in Bulgaria has a distinct written legal form, so you can easily analyze it because it's well documented. Also, legal interpretation is relatively, relatively predictable and less burdened by political, ideological, or other expedience. There is inconsistency that I spoke already about in the qualifications of the Bulgarian presence in the territories of Greece and Yugoslavia during the Second War. And there is a big stark contrast and discrepancy, discrepancy between the official positions of the modern Bulgarian state and the World Academic Centers for Study of the Holocaust. And let me show you this contrast. The position of today, this is a short retrospection of the position of today's Bulgarian state, starting 15 years ago, 2013, when we commemorated the 70, 70th anniversary of the rescue of Bulgarian Jews, and uh, we were supposed to show respect for the memory of the victims of the Holocaust. What you're seeing on the right is an uh, excerpt from the uh, declaration of the National Assembly, that was the official position on the, uh, this special occasion, where for the first time, the 11,343 Jews that were deported from uh, Greece and Macedonia, from Trace and uh, uh, Macedonia were mentioned in the official state position, at least the first that I know of. And look at the, the phrase that the uh, parliamentarians uh, used. They said they uh, cannot deny that these people were uh, deported, but uh, they're sorry about this fact because the, 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 the territories were under 
German jurisdiction. Five years later, for the first time, the then Prime Minister of Bulgaria, Mr. Boyko Borisov, oh, I didn't change it. I'm using two computers and, uh, because my notes are on, the, on my laptop. Uh, our Prime Minister, for the first time, visit uh, on the commemoration of uh, 75th anniversary Macedonia, uh, and this is official press release from the Cabinet of Prime Minister on his visit in Skopje on tw uh, 12th of March 2008. And as you see, I haven't underlined it here, but it says, Bulgaria received from Nazi Germany the rights for administrative governance of the territory, but not the possibility to accept as its own citizens all the people living on this territory. Unfortunately, part of the text is not seen. Could I? I'll read it to you. The Jews of these lands were forbidden to obtain Bulgarian citizenship and remained under the, again, the jurisdiction of the Nazi authorities. That's what is written uh, and is not seen on the screen at the moment. But it's part of the official position in 2018. These days, two months ago, on uh, the 80th anniversary, the official state position could be found uh, find in uh, mm, this press release by the President of the Republic of Bulgaria. It's again not seen entirely. Oh, it's, you can see it, I hope, now. No mention of the Jews deported from Trace in Macedonia. Just five years later than the previous commemoration in uh, uh, the position of uh, the then Prime Minister Borisov. It says even that Bulgarian institutions, institutions rejected anti-Semitism as if there was no anti-Jewish legislation in Bulgaria, no persecution of uh, Bulgarian Jews and uh, um, Mentioning of the victims of the Holocaust is only as uh, the, the big number of the millions without specific mentioning of the Jews that were deported from Trace and Macedonia. And more, of, uh, look at the, the second uh, paragraph. The president actually warned everybody that is trying to uh, who is trying to, to speak about the, the, the deported jewelry from Trace and Macedonia, that this is an attempt to impute guilt. At the very least, a sign of disrespect for our rescued Jewish fellow citizens and for the moral feet of tiny Bulgaria. So we can say that for 15 years, the first positions were not based on truth, but there were some signs that the government is rethinking the, the, the position that was uh, well established for decades, but now in 2023 there is a regress to denial of everything that's happened. This uh, position, official state position, is in a stark contrast with uh, every world academic research institute, including, of course, Yad Vashem. This is just a small example, what you can read about Bulgaria during the war and its poli policy toward uh, uh, jewelry and uh, everybody, everything that you can read, always mentions that in the early 1943, the government Acceded to Germany's demands to deport the Jews of Thrace and Macedonia to the extermination camps in Poland that prepared the first deportation of Bulgarian Jews and according to different factors, they, they were rescued and the deportation was stopped. 
It's the same what we can read on uh, the pages of uh, uh, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum or the European Holocaust Research Infrastructure. It basically states undisputable facts and legal qualifications of what happened in 1943. What are the questions that the legal analysis can answer? The first one is what is the legal status of the so-called new Bulgarian lands or territories in Thrace and Macedonia, Macedonia during the, the Second World War? Under whose jurisdiction are the Jews of uh, Thrace, Macedonia and Pirot? Are the deportations of civilians, civilian populations legal during the Second World War, because this was an issue raised in Bulgaria, is the Kingdom of Bulgaria responsible for the deportation and then today Bulgaria uh, could be uh, responsible too? I, these are the, the well-known facts about participation of the Kingdom of Bulgaria uh, in the, the World War. And uh, I'm not going to read it to you because we don't have much time, but I'm sure that the, this knowledgeable audience are well aware and know how um, the Bulgaria participation started and what happened next. The question that I wanted to answer in my research is how should we call this new Bulgarian lands or territories? Occupied, annexed, or just administered, as you can see usually the state institution is Bulgaria calling them. There are two relevant legal norms that we have to uh, to bear in mind. And one uh, note here I'd like to make for the researcher, for today's researcher, it's very dangerous that he can or she can analyze the past during the today's lens that he is uh, looking at through. And that's why it, the entire research that I have written is based on the international and national Bulgarian law as it was in, uh, during the war, without any uh, mentioning of the future developments, uh, conventions, human rights conventions, etc. So if we look at the – how can I go back because I missed a slide. I don't see some – Uh-huh, okay, thanks, yeah. So the, the, the legal framework of this time, and actually this time, today time too, was the Hague regulations from 1907, and these two particular articles of the Hague regulations, which says that the territory is considered occupied under specific conditions, and what is common in these two articles is that an important fact, who is the occupator of a territory, is uh, who is holding the factual, actual power and authority over the territory and its citizens. What happened? Somebody? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Did I do that? This is a well established legal definition of the military occupation from uh, uh, um, 
Ayala Benvenisti, a well-known author, legal author, and academic in the field, which again says uh, and puts the, the focus on the effective factual control over the territory. So we can, having that in mind, we can check the documents that we have from the time to see who or which state has that actual factual uh, authority over the Trace and Macedonia and Pirot and it's the citizens living there, the people living there. Well, one well-known document is the Claudius Popov Agreement, which is an economic agreement uh, between Germany, Nazi Germany and the Kingdom of Bulgaria. Uh, in this document, Bulgarian state is, uh, uh, as an occupier, according to me and uh, according to the uh, legal scientists, is uh, giving up some rights of the occupier to Nazi Germany. There are some words that we can find in this uh, agreement. It's written in Bulgarian, and it's my translation here, but uh, they speak about parts of former Yugoslav state seized by Bulgaria, captured by Bulgaria, taken over by Bulgarian troops, occupied even by Bulgarian, by Bulgaria, former Yugoslavian areas. The same agreement was uh, uh, signed uh, uh, about the Greek territories with uh, similar content. Even more important document, act, the Paris Treaty of Peace with Bulgaria from 1947. It explicitly, explicitly mentions the occupation by Bulgaria of territory of those states, Greece and Yugoslavia. You may wonder if it's so clear why somebody arguing from today's date what, what was the role in Bulgaria in this, in this uh, uh, territories, foreign territories, and I can tell you one of some of the objections raised in Bulgarian public discussion and also even in academic discussion. Some authors in Bulgaria argue that Bulgaria did not occupy the new lands due to the rule of the so-called first occupation principle, and based on that signed capitulations of Greece and Yugoslavia, the occupation regime was established by Germany, and therefore Germany was the temporary sovereign responsible for the population according to the international law. But if you check all the legal books on international law, you will never find such rule, the first occupation principle. During war, the authority, the power over some territories could change many times. And it's always important who has the effective actual authority over the land and its uh, uh, inhabitants. Objection two, raised in Bulgarian discussion. Bulgarian presence in the new territories cannot be defined as military occupation because Bulgaria has not participated in their forcible invasion and they are not inhabited by a foreign population or otherwise it's inhabited with Bulgarian population. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, funny even to argue with because who uses the military strength is irrelevant. Sometimes occupation could, could be established without uh, uh, using force, just with threat of force. Sometimes even peace treaty, uh, treaty could establish uh, military occupation. So this argument is easy to be uh, disqualified. What the, uh, the, the second um, argument that the, the population was not foreign, uh, firstly, the citizens there were Bo Yugoslavian and Greek citizens, majority of them, but the responsibility that the occupying sta state has uh, toward citizens does not depend on their citizenship. 
all the people who are under the authority of the uh, military occupant uh, protected by the uh, international humanitarian law. So this argument, this objection could e easily also be uh, opposed. Objection three, another one from the Bulgarian discu discussion. It has been repeatedly pointed out by various authors, also uh, lawyers or historians, that the power exercised by the Kingdom of Bulgaria over the new territories has a temporary limited nature of administrative governance because the final determination of the political status of the new lands should be made after the end of the war. I cannot agree more with this statement. It is not an objection to the notion that Bulgaria has uh, exercise military occupation, but it's a confirmation of the, of the same, because military occupation is always limited, has always limited nature, is always temporary, and uh, you cannot argue with this, you cannot use it also to justify the, um, the acts of the military occupant. And when all the arguments against the, the legal qualifications of the, uh, the so-called new territories are exhausted, then comes the final one. The Bulgarian state could not stop the deportation of the Jews from the new lands because they were not Bulgarian citizen, citizens. Let me say again that the person living under military occupation has rights and has to be protected on different basis, not which citizens are they, but because they are in, uh, under the international uh, law of war and international humanitarian law which protects them. When we argue in Bulgaria under which jurisdictions were the Jews from Trace, Macedonia, and Pirut, the undisputable uh, arguments that could be uh, underlined here is that there was no question that the Kingdom of Bulgaria was the occupation power in the new lands under the Hague Regulation. More, all Bulgarian and anti-Jewish laws were applied on this so-called new territories. The Jewish property was confiscated in favor of Bulgarian state, not Nazi Germany. Jews were subject to monthly registration in the local Bulgarian police department, not other state departments. Bulgaria signed a treaty with Nazi Germany on the deportation of the Jewish population, and Bulgarian government adopted seven decrees regulating the deportation. The Bulgarian administration, let me read it because it's probably some problem with the formatting, I'll read it from here. The Bulgarian administration implemented organizationally, logistically, all deportation actions until the Jews were handed over in German hands. This is with, without question the truth, well documented and difficult to be uh, objected. Another question, I, um, uh, I don't have time, but let me go quickly through this. You might wonder who is this today person who will, wonder, who will question the illegality of the civilian, uh, deportation of civilian population. But it happened in Bulgaria. Even uh, members of parliament have raised that uh, question. And they say that the deportation of civilian population committed during the Second World War was uh, uh, legal 
because there was no explicit provision prohibiting deportations of the civilian population. And uh, uh, the truth is that in the Hague Regulations of 1907, explicit provisions was not included because according to the contracting states, deportations were below the minimum standard of civilization and therefore do not require deliberate prohibition. Deportation of civilians is criminalized in the Nuremberg char Charter and there was no single, there is no single case uh, in Nuremberg tribunals or courts in France, China, Israel and Netherlands, Poland and all the other that were uh, performed after the war that treats the mass deportations, that doesn't treat the mass deportation as crimes. So, I'll, I'll uh, skip some slides because I don't have time, but I want to, to speak uh, with you about something. The question of legal responsibility of Bulgarian authorities for the deportation. It is argued, and as you saw already, it's part of the official state position, that uh, Nazi Germany is solely responsible for the deportation of the Jewish population from uh, Macedonia, Trace, and Pirut, because Bulgaria has only temporarily uh, rights to only temporarily administrate these territories and the Bulgarian authorities do not have the opportunity, the ground, and the sovereign power to refuse the, the deportation of population. There are two possible exclusions to the state uh, uh, responsibility that could, could be potentially applied uh, if Bulgaria is not responsible. One is if Bulgaria is a puppet state, which is not capable of uh, functioning without the sanction of Germany in every decision that is made. And this could be easily uh, uh, opposed because the Bulgarian state during the war, is, the war is recognized by international community as a sovereign state. The authorities are created without any external intervention. The state authorities take their own decisions the state territory is not occupied by Germany and at the will of its own state bodies, Bulgaria has signed an official international treaty by virtue of which uh, it uh, give, gave to Germany uh, the Jew, Jews from Thrace and Macedonia. The other possibility that could uh, possibly and potentially exclude the uh, international responsibility of the Bulgarian state is if the deportation is a result of direct coercion on the Bulgarian authorities or otherwise if Germany is using force, military force or threat of military to force to make the Bulgarian uh, authorities perform the deportation. This is not true. The two states were partners in the tripartite pact. They, it is true that Germany and Nazi Germany was uh, uh, very influential as a stronger uh, party of this uh, coalition, but it always uh, was performed through diplomacy and negotiation between two sovereign allied states. There is no evidence of direct German orders to deport population from the territories controlled by Bulgaria. This was negotiated with the Bulgarian authorities. I will skip the last objection because it's on the field of virtual historiography. What could have happened if Bulgaria um, have refused to deport the Jewry from Thrace and uh, Macedonia. It is not <laughs> um, academic to, do, to analyze such hypothet hypothetical questions, but even in these questions we have to rely on facts. And one of the facts is that no other ally of Nazi Germany was sanctioned based 
solely on this ground that refused to uh, that it refused to um, give away give uh, the Jews from the territory. But re let me remind you in the end again the position of today's Bulgarian state. It's, but I haven't put the, the new one, so I, I won't remind you. When we, when we are speaking about such a sensitive topics, it is my deepest conviction that we have to uh, carefully base our uh, arguments only on facts. And the facts, as you see it on the slide, uh, that during Second World War, the Kingdom of Bulgaria exercised military occupation over Macedonia, Thrace, and today southeastern Serbia, and therefore has the corresponding obligation to protect the civilians in the occupied territories. Second, the initiative of the deportation was not Bulgarian, it was German. But the pressure does not involve direct, co direct coercion force or threat of force towards Bulgaria, but it's carried through negotiation and diplomacy between the two partners. And third, the Bulgarian authorities carry out the deportation of the Jewish population of Macedonia, Thrace, and Pirut in all its legal, organizational, and logistic aspects until the Jews were handed over in the Nazi hands. Uh, according to me, it's shameful to deny these basic facts and legal uh, interpretation of the facts. But let me finish with a sentence from uh, the president of the European Parliament, Roberta Metzola, on the occasion of 80th anniversary of the rescue of the Bulgarian Jews several months ago. She says, today people know how even in Europe's darkest hours there was light glimmering in Bulgaria. It is true, but it is also true that there was darkness in Bulgaria during these times. And uh, the noble thing is to speak and talk and write uh, again and again about not only the light, but the darkness that happened. That's what I tried to do in the paper that I wrote and uh, during my presentation here. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll proceed immediately.